Anin, Bojo, Joel Egoissa, and Dijnikas. Welcome to another episode of White Buffalo Circles at Home Edition. This week, my daughter and I will be looking at the medicine wheel and exploring just a few of the many teachings that the medicine wheel has to offer. I uh, hope you guys enjoy. Hope you're being safe out there. Take care, and uh, I hope to see you soon. Ani, sunshine. Ani. How are you doing? Good. Good. So on my first visits, uh, we talked about my bundle and sacred items, and we talked about the four sacred medicines. So <clears throat> today we're going to talk about <clears throat> this thing right here. This is called the medicine wheel. Can you say medicine wheel? Medicine wheel. Good job. First of all, when you look at the medicine wheel, what shape is the medicine wheel? Um, what shape is that? A circle. That's right. That's a circle. Now, whenever the Ojibwe people did stuff, one thing we always liked to do too was we looked at Mother Nature. We looked at Mother Earth and we figured out how does Mother Earth do stuff? And in the natural world, everything wants to be round in a circle, right? Think about that. What shape is Mother Earth? A circle. Yeah. What about the sun? A circle. What about the moon? <clears throat> yeah. What about apples? Sir. Oranges, grapes, peaches, plums, Sir. watermelons, honeydew melons, cantaloupes, pumpkins, everything round, 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 circles, circles, circles. <clears throat> All these trees and plants start from seeds. Lots of creatures start from eggs. Did you know that you started out as a perfect little circle egg inside of your mom's belly? And you grew into this beautiful creature in front of me today. So in nature, everything wants to be round. So the Ojibwe people, we looked at that and we noticed that. So when we did things, we do it in circle. We have a circular way of thinking and a circular way of doing things. Now, another big difference between the way that we live today in Canada and the way my people have lived here in Turtle Island for thousands of years is this. This is pretty crazy. Now, the Ojibwe people, we never, ever, ever wrote things down. Isn't that crazy? No books, no alphabet, no words ever were written down in our language. That's pretty crazy. And again, a lot of people used to think that we did it because we were uncivilized and we didn't know how to, but that's not true at all. It's not hard to make an alphabet. It's easy to write things down. We did it for a very important purpose. And that purpose was to keep our elders an important part of our culture always. Today, if you want to know something, you ask the computer. I could pull my phone out and I could say, hey Siri, what's this? And it would tell me whatever I wanted to know. But back then, if you wanted to know something, you had to go to your elders. You had to go to your grandma and you had to ask your grandma how she did that last week or go to your grandfather and ask him, how did he do this? And he would love that you came to ask him and he would take you into the forest and he would show you how to do it. So by writing things down over the years and years, our technology got really good, but we lost our connection and the important role of our grandmas and grandpas in our circle. So the medicine wheel is a teaching tool for the Ojibwe people, partially because we didn't write things down. We put hundreds of teachings into this little circle. And you already learned about one, right? In the yellow, tobacco. In the red, cedar. In the black, sage and in the white sweet grass right the four sacred medicines sit on the medicine wheel but there's all kinds of teachings i've sat with elders 10 50 20 elders and i always learn something new about the medicine wheel teachings there's hundreds of teachings in this little circle and when i teach kids i always like to start off with these teachings right here and the first ones have to do with this what is that you know what that is? Um, Can you say compass? Compass. Now compass points me in a certain direction. And on the medicine wheel, there are four different directions. Now, I always like to start off here in the yellow when I do these different teachings, because that's the way that I was taught. We always begin in that eastern doorway, and then we move clockwise around the circle. And one of the reasons we do that, we start there in the east, has to do with the four directions. Now something 
<clears throat> happens every morning here in the east. Look at my picture. What happens every morning in the east? The sun. <laughs> the sun, that's right. Every morning in the east, the sun rises. So for our house, the east is that way. And every morning the sun comes up over those trees and starts to light up our world in the eastern doorway. And then it crosses across the sky and it sets, it goes down over there. This is the west. west. Can you say west? West. Good job. So every night the sun sets in the western sky. Have you ever seen a beautiful sunset before? Yeah, I know you have. You've seen some. So one of my favorite things to do actually is to sit out here on the deck and face the western sky and watch the sun set. Sometimes the sun just goes down and it doesn't look like much, but sometimes when that sun is setting, it lights up the sky in red and pink and orange and yellow and green. And then the clouds make these beautiful patterns in the sky. It's almost like God is painting us this beautiful picture just before we have to go to bed and just before it gets dark. So I love to watch the sunset. It's my favorite thing. Now this right here, this is the top of Mother Earth. It is something called the North Pole. Have That's you ever heard of the North Pole? Santa lives here. <laughs> People say Santa lives at the North Pole. Now I'm going to tell you something about the North Pole. You see my finger right here? Mm -hmm. That is Sudbury. That's where we live. And it's pretty cold in the wintertime in Sudbury, right? If you go to this red line here, this is the Arctic Circle. That's where polar bears live. It's super cold where the polar bears live. If you go from Sudbury all the way to the tip top North Pole, the top of Mother Earth, it is freezing. It is way too cold for regular non-magical people like me and you to go there. We cannot go to the North Pole because it is so, so cold. So I don't know about Santa and his workshop because I've never been to the North Pole. But I can tell you, it is freezing at the North Pole. This is the bottom of Mother Earth. This is a place called Antarctica. Can you say Antarctica? Antarctica. <laughs> yeah, that's a tough one. This is where penguins live. This is the South Pole. It is freezing in the South Pole, just like in the North Pole. Sometimes people go down to Antarctica to study the, the land down there. But in the winter time, those scientists, those people, they leave because it is freezing in the north and south parts of Mother Earth. So let's say east, east, south, south, west, west, and north. north. Good job. Those are the four directions on the medicine wheel. Now we take them down and guess what happens? Here we go. Ready? Now we erase it and the medicine wheel changes and it teaches us something new, something different. Now the medicine wheel is gonna teach us about the four times of day. Now, humans, we like to wake up in the- Morning time. <laughs> there you go. There's my picture for morning. It's a little Smurf. You see him, he's stretching out in his bed. <laughs> he's waking up in the morning. How does my little Smurf buddy know that it's morning? The sun. The sun, that's it, good job. Humans are interesting because God made us a certain way. Humans love the sun. So when the sun comes up in the morning, we wake up. Our brain starts to fire up and there's electrical signals going on. We're ready to learn, we're ready to do stuff. So we go to school during the day. So we have morning, we got day, and then the day gets on, it goes on, it comes over to here, then it's evening. There's my picture for evening. That's the Simpsons and they're having some dinner because usually in the evening we have one more good meal with our family before the sun goes down. And then humans like to go to sleep at night. night time. So that's how humans work. Sun comes up, we get up. Sun goes down, we go to sleep. We love the sunshine. We are tied to that sunshine. Did you know this? In cedar, there's vitamin C. Vitamin C is good for your body. You drink that cedar tea. But the sun, just by letting the sun hit my skin right now, I'm getting something called vitamin D. Vitamin D from the sunshine. Isn't that cool? So the sun actually gives us vitamins and makes us happy. So we got morning. Let's say morning. Morning. Day. 
day. Evening. Evening. And night. Night. Good job. Now we're going to do it again. Ready? We erase it. <laughs> and we got something new. Now the medicine wheel is going to teach us about the four seasons. Every year, there's four seasons. Do you know what season it is right now? Okay. It's starting to warm up. The leaves are coming back on the trees. What season are we in? I think summer. No, not summer yet. Before summertime spring. comes spring. Good job, sunshine. This is my picture for spring. That's a little baby deer. Oh. He's sitting in the grass. Now, I put a picture of a baby deer for springtime because in Mother Nature, animals have their babies in the spring. Right now, the little raccoons and the baby deers and baby rabbits and baby chipmunks, they're all being born. If this little baby deer was born in the middle of winter time, do you think she would survive in the middle of winter time? No. Nope. No, she would she not. She hibernate. That's right. A lot of animals, they hibernate or they move south in, the, in those cold winter months. There's no food in the winter. It's freezing in the forest in Sudbury. And you got to remember, animals live in the forest. So in the middle of winter time, it would be really hard for her to survive. So the babies are born in the spring. That way they can have all spring to get bigger and stronger. And they have all this season for their moms and dads to show them how to survive. And they got all this season to get bigger and stronger. And by the time they get to the winter time, hopefully she'll be big enough and strong enough to survive out in those cold, cold winters. So in the white, we got winter. In the yellow, we got spring. Down here in the red, what comes after spring? Mm -hmm. Oh, we're going in the pool. It's really hot out. Summer. Yeah, my favorite season, summertime. I love the summer. I don't care how hot it is. I love being on my shorts and being outside and enjoying the beautiful colors in the summertime. But after summertime, the leaves start to turn, turn colors. And then the leaves start to fall off the trees. What do they call this season? Um, Winter, spring, summer, and... What do they call that one? Fall. Ah, good job. That's fall. Why do you think they call it fall? Because the leaves start, start to fall. That's absolutely right. So say with me. Spring. Spring. Summer. Summer. Fall. Fall. Winter. Winter. And then what? Does it just end? It does? Tell me this. Is there an ending to a circle? Yeah. There is no ending in a circle. It doesn't end, right? It's not the end of the line. And that's a very interesting point because Anishinaabek people, we don't just use this medicine wheel for a teaching tool. We think circular thoughts. Our people do things and have a circular way of being. And when you think in a circle, nothing ever ends. So what happens is you get back to the spring and it starts a new year. Right? It goes spring, summer, fall, winter, spring, summer, fall, winter. And it never, ever ends. It just keeps going. All right. So the four seasons. Here we go again. Ready? Can you help me out? <laughs> Are we going to erase it? <laughs> yeah. And now what do we got? Okay, so this one's good. I like this one. I got two more, okay? We're getting almost done. You're doing a great job, Sunshine. These ones, this one talks about life. Life in the circle. Life in the medicine wheel. As opposed to life in that linear way of thinking. Now, when humans are born, they're cute little humans. And they cry a lot. What do you call those cute little humans? Babies. Yeah, babies. That's actually Abby. When she was a little baby. I still use that picture in my bundle. So when we're born, we start our life here in the physical world, here in the eastern door. Just like the sun lights up our world every morning in the east, that's where we start our life. And we start to get older. So now, are you a baby? No. Are you a toddler? No. No. You're a kid, right? So here's babies, and then toddlers, and then JK kindergarten's right about here. But you're going to start to get older. Pretty soon you're going to be off to grade four, grade five. Before you know what happens, you're going to be going off to high school. You're going to be a teenager. It's going to happen pretty quick. You'll be as old as junior before I know what happens. And then you're going to keep getting old. I was a baby once, right? I was a cute little eight pound, 14 ounce baby Joel. 
But then I got older and I went to kindergarten, just like you. And then I got older and I went to high school, just like Junior. And then I kept getting older. So, Dada, I'm over here. Who's over here? Kids, teenagers. Mama and you. Yes, that is adults. Right? Dada is an adult. So I'm way over here in my life. And you're still way over here in your life. you got a long ways to go. Hopefully one day, if I'm lucky, I'm going to get older and I'm going to get to be up here. Who's up there, do you think? Who's older than adults? Grandmas. Yeah, grandmas and grandpas are elders. That's absolutely right. One day, sunshine, I'm going to have gray hair. I'm going to be an old man. I'm going to be walking around and be teaching you about my culture. <laughs> and one day, just like everything on Mother Earth, one day, I am going to die. But it's okay. Remember, in the circle, nothing ever ends. And everything that lives here on Earth one day dies. In the medicine wheel teachings, when we get back to the end of our journey, it's not the end of anything. When you're born, your spirit comes from the spirit world and enters your body in the physical world. And you're still inside of your mother's belly in that water. And then that spirit walks with us the whole time we live here on the physical realm, on the earth. And when my body dies, when I get old and my body shuts down, my spirit doesn't die. My spirit goes home. It gets to go back to the spirit world with all my ancestors and visit them. And I get to start a whole new journey in the spirit world with God, with the Creator. So nothing ever ends when you think about things in that circular way of being. So let's say, babies, babies. teenagers, teenagers, adults, Ow. elders. Elders, good job. Elders. And those elders have a very important role. Everyone has that equal important role. One thing about circles, sunshine, is it's all about balance. Um, okay, ready? Here we go again. Erase it. This is the last one I'm going to teach you for today because it's we're getting on the time here. These ones are called the four elements. Now, if we didn't have just one of these on Earth, we would all be dead. There would be no life on this planet. We need these elements to survive. And every morning when I say my prayers and offer my tobacco, I thank the creator for these elements first. Tell me, Sunshine, what is the best thing for a human to drink? What's the best, healthiest thing for a human to drink? Water. Mm -hmm. Good. Absolutely right. Do you have another guess? What else is really good for humans to drink? Lemons. Lemons? Yeah, lemon juice, orange juice. A lot of kids say that. One thing a lot of kids say is milk. Milk has calcium. It is good for you. It helps to build up uh, your bones and things like that. But milk, what animal does milk come from? Do you know what animal milk comes from? Cows. Cows, right. And I told you on my first visit, are cows from Turtle Island? No. Nope. No, they are not from Turtle Island. And it's kind of weird to think about it. Do you know you drink milk? From a cow? <laughs> yeah. You drink cow's milk. It's kind of weird when you say it out loud, right? I think we're the only creatures on earth. We drink milk from another creature. So you're absolutely right. The most important thing, the best thing for a human to drink is water. Do you know why water is so important for humans? Because you are water. <laughs> Do I sound silly? You are made of water. Humans are mostly made of water molecules. So just follow me for a sec. If the medicine wheel is your body, then this part here, the white part, this is your bones and all the tissue inside of your body. All of the rest of your body is made from water molecules. Humans are made mostly of water. Think about it. When you go running around the house and you get really, really hot, what starts to come out of your skin? Water. Sweat. Water, right? Yeah. What about when you get really sad and you start to cry? What comes out of your eyes? Water. Water. You are made of water. If you run around, you get too hot and you sweat too much water out of your body, you got to go back inside, get some water, and you got to fill yourself back up with water. So we are water. And I always thank God for all of the fresh, clean, beautiful water that we have here in these lands. Because if we didn't have that, we'd be in pretty big trouble, right? And there's lots of kids all around the world 
they don't have access to water like me and you do every day from a tap in our house. So in the east, you got water. Then you come down here. What is this? Fire. Fire. Good job. Now in Ojibwe, the word for fire is shkode or oshkode. And it doesn't really mean fire. That's an English translation. Oshkode talks about energy. The energy from the sun that we can feel right now. The energy in the lights in our home. The energy beating inside of your chest that keeps your heart pumping. So fire, oshkode, where would we be without that? Right? We would all be popsicles freezing in the sudden winters if we didn't have fire keeping us nice and warm in our home. So in the south is fire. Okay, this one's pretty cool. I want you to take a deep breath. Go. What did you just breathe into your body? Air. Air, yeah, the air that we breathe into our body. Now, there's a few things in air, and one of those things is oxygen. And we get oxygen from not just trees, but the green things on Mother Earth, the flowers and the seaweed and the trees, they all give us beautiful, clean oxygen to breathe. And where would we be without oxygen, right? Always thank God for living here in Canada as well, because look around us. We're surrounded by trees, right, Sunshine? That big tree right there, that tree is doing 20 things for us right now for free. And when the trees breathe, they breathe out fresh, clean oxygen for me and you. Last one up here, this is Earth. Every morning, I always thank God for these four things. So let's say one more time, Sunshine. Say, water. Water. Fire. Fire. Air. Air. Earth. Those are the four elements on the medicine wheel. Okay, Sunshine, I'm gonna take them down and I'm gonna do it one more time. Ready? <laughs> We're gonna erase it. That's all we got for today. So, Bama Pete, we'll see you next week. Yeah. All right, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that short teaching on the medicine wheel. As usual, if you have any questions you'd like to ask, you can post them in the comments on the Facebook page or have your teacher uh, email me directly. Bama P everybody, you take care of yourselves. I hope to see you soon.